Um, my name is Chris Donovan. I'm the SVP of Creative Marketing for E Entertainment and the Esquire Network. And what that means, because it sounds way fancier than it really is, is that uh, I'm fortunate enough to work with teams that lead sort of doing all the standard creative work like trailers and spots. Um, and also we do a lot of uh, content for our digital and social platform. Yes, when I was a boy, I always <laughs> dreamed of creating social and digital content. For, no. Um, I was fortunate in my last position to be at a young network where social and digital content was sort of where we lived. Um, my old boss always said we needed to market to where our audience was, so that became a de facto part of it. So um, I've always been a big believer in sort of an integrated approach to any sort of creative and campaigns, which if you don't have a social digital or content creative aspect, you're kind of just missing the boat. Well, it's interesting. The idea of um, formation stories, um, uh, obviously there was that great article that was written by David Brooks in the New York Times a little while ago after uh, Joe Biden appeared on the Colbert Report and he talked about his his uh, background and what he had gone through. And by just basically telling the story of his life and to a large degree, his personal tragedies, he was able to package in a way without saying what his political philosophy was, what his philosophy was in a way that directly spoke to the audience in the clearest and most concise way rather than him even talking about political policy. So I think a formation story is interesting because to either your direct reports, to your teams, or, and most importantly, even to yourself, you, it's, it's your, it's how did you get here? Because it's a platform to say where you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's one of the reasons why formation stories are good because it's a way to address the audience in an emotional way where it's, uh, so the sort of tacky way to probably put it is, 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 is that it's a way to really sugarcoat a philosophy without it sounding like bullet points or, or, or a PowerPoint presentation where people can kind of easily understand and digest what it's about. I mean, it's been so hackneyed, but in a, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, that tells you everything you need to know that you're about to see with Star Wars versus the classic sort of sci-fi or fantasy tropes where it's like tons of voiceover that sets up who the whole world is and everybody's like just <laughs> falls asleep. But when you had that, that, that it gave you the whole philosophy of what you were about to see. So you're like cool with people with laser swords and ray guns because that makes tons of sense. Yes. So. Yes. I think that that's so important because it's the story you tell yourself about yourselves. I saw the episode that was referenced in the Brooks article in person and it really was sort of impressive to me because at that point I thought he was kind of like, he was your weird uncle who was yeah. the vice president who kind of spoke inappropriately and did weird things and then when you saw that side of him, you were like, oh, you're kind of no joke. This is like Aaron Sorkin level sort of character assessment. You understand where he comes from and what he was trying to do. And in a, in a weird way, like when I heard his formation story, you kind of forgave him of his gaffes yeah. and his Ray-Ban aviators because you're like, okay, I get it. Right. I get it. Like you're, 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 you're a human being, you're an authentic person but you have really clear values and I get why you were the Democratic Senator from Delaware. Yeah. Well, I think that a formation story is so important as, as a leader because if you don't have a sense about where you came from, as the world continues to change, how do you ever chart a course about where you're going? Um, to go back to the to the Biden story, you got that he was dedicated to helping people, to trying to make the world a better place because he himself had been so c close to tragedy twice now, obviously, uh, famously in the 70s with the horrible accident that his wife and daughter had been in, and then later on with his son, Bo, who had been the attorney general. Um, for the state of Delaware. So you, you, you understood where he was going, but for me, um, with my own career, as I've thought about stuff, if it was only ever about what my project was in front of me without thinking about 
how I arrived at doing these projects or this campaign or where they were going, it becomes almost impossible to scale as the world continues to change. I mean, we have things that we have to do creative content and work for that didn't exist 18 months ago that suddenly is the most important thing to our audience. I mean, you can't understand Snapchat without being on Snapchat, for example. So if you don't have a clue about what stuff works or where you want to come from, when you start engaging and encountering sort of these, and I'll use the term alien sort of media platforms, mm -hmm. like how are you ever going to succeed? Right. Because right. you're only ever going to, because if you don't have a philosophy, if you don't know where you came from, there's no way to move forward in a way that's tactical. And then as a leader, how do you inspire and help people move forward unless you're the one who's always doing it yourself, which is no way to lead. Right. You've okay. got to, you know, you can't lead, you can't lead from behind that way. I think a story can find its unique edge in terms of a few elements. For one, there needs to be a really clear message, like why did you tell a story and not just deliver sort of facts in an email? I think if there isn't something that hits a couple of different aspects of who people are, um, you know, for in a business organization, where are we going? Why are we doing this? Why is it important? And if you can encapsulate those in a storytelling sort of element, then you've given people a lot more than just a directive. I need this tomorrow, or I need a thing that's 30 seconds long. Mm -hmm. If you can say, this is a really important thing, that's a great opportunity that the company's really looking towards. Suddenly, as an individual who's been given that assignment, you take pride rather than it being something that has to get done. No, for sure. I mean, you know, even go back to your question about like what makes storytelling unique. Mm -hmm. We're not made of memories. We're made of stories. It's what the narrative is that links all these pieces together. So from a brand and from a business standpoint, if you don't have stories that are linking who you are, like what your legacy is or where you want to go from, whether it's pride or work ethic or the quality of the work that you're doing, mm -hmm. it just, you, you have literally, and I'm using the word correctly, no direction. That's why storytelling is so important. We're pop culture, but there's the pop of pop culture where we're packaging and curating and giving people a point of view on this material. The material exists in a variety of different ways and in no time have human beings been able to access this material in so many different ways whether it's through Instagram, whether it's through Snapchat, whether it's through following people on Twitter, or commentary from friends or news feeds or social feeds, or you know, even just somebody like texting you, like, did you just see this thing that just popped up and sent you a picture? Um, and that's part of our, our, our values because we're, we're pulling this material together, which means we have to have a point of view and an understanding of who we are as an entity because we're not just like, reproducing it right we're giving we're putting it we're gunning it through a very specific lens so when our audience comes to any of our e sort of properties or platforms they understand that they're going to have a specific type of experience for looking at this kind of material it's a it's a really challenging probably one of the most challenging pieces of advice to give somebody when you're mentoring them is to ask them to look within themselves to be the best version of themselves. And I think it speaks to this larger question of what's your formation story. Because if you keep making it about things that are outside of you, it's harder to judge if you've done something really well. It's harder to understand if something's quote unquote good. Everything's good. You know, Oscar Wilde famously said, all, you know, all art is useless. And he also said art for art's sake. And in our business, you can have, um, and we see it all the time now, but you can have a property, whether like, let's just make it a movie for a second. And you can have whatever that initial marketing push was for how that movie went out into the marketplace. And then that movie maybe becomes a cult favorite or people love it. And then when it's packaged later, it's packaged with those moments or it's packaged with a different point of view. Well, was one right and the other one wrong? Or was one really just acknowledging 
where it was in context as a property or maybe the brand that it's being pl platformed on. And brands are just stories of corporations anyways, right, that are consumer facing. Mm -hmm. um, so when you understand that there's all these different stories and you understand your point of view, that's when you can become really valuable as an asset to your organization because then they understand that you have a distinct point of view that you can bring to it that people can call upon and harness and use in certain situations versus you're not just, we're not just drones who crank out content. Yes. You know, you have to have this, this point of view. And I think that that early on in your career is one of your missions is figuring out like, what's your point of view? Like, what are you good at doing? What, what fulfills you and what do you enjoy doing? Because there's a variety of different ways to do anything. Yes. Absolutely. So that that I think is, you know, when you say authentic self, it's tough because it's what what does that mean? But if you but but if you but if you take a beat, you think about what it is that you like about stuff or how you respond to things. If you force yourself to think the best way that you can think, then one of the byproducts will be that you become your authentic self, yeah. that you're better at it than than anything else. It's, and I think you see it when you see sometimes different properties that you're used to marketed or if you hear a certain entity or a director or a certain studio and once again has a brand idea, if they do it, mm -hmm. people get excited about it. I use the example all the time of like Marvel movies because when Marvel movies are on ABC, they're represented a very specific way that, that ladders back to the brand. But then when Marvel movies are on FX, it's represented in a completely different way to the point where you're, you can't even believe they're the same movie just because of how they're marketed. Now, by the way, both marketed correctly for who their platforms are. Which one's correct? They both are. Yeah. Because they're being respectful of who their audience and who their individual brands are, even though you have similar properties. Right. That's why I think Netflix is really interesting, for example, right now, is because they know who their audiences are through a lot of their real-time data. And this speaks to the storytelling aspect of it, where you can go, guess what? A lot of people are really enjoying these like sci-fi and fantasy movies from the early 80s. What if we made a show that was all about that? We could call it Stranger Things and own all the visuals. And I mean, because they could have packaged Stranger Things in a totally different way. But they owned exactly it. I mean, all you saw was the Goonies when you saw the bikes. All you saw were Shades of E.T. Like, because they owned all of those pieces. The music, everything that they did was just so on the money because they understood who it was that they were talking to. The storytelling wasn't even the plot of the series, which is what we've been so used to for so long. The storytelling was the referential aspects of it that it delivered to you. Yeah. I mean, incredible to me. I mean, I, I'm obsessed with like Luke Cage right now, just thinking about all, all that stuff. But it's amazing to me that they were like, I have an idea. Let's make a Western, but in Harlem. And you're like, amazing. Win. Instead of just like, oh, we're going to make the Luke Cage half of Iron Fist and, you know, whatever. And just do the do the series version of it it's like nope yeah. <laughs> i mean i even bought the record because they i mean musically they are referencing all the ennio morricone spaghetti westerns and music is always amazing because it's like one of my favorite sort of storytelling pieces because sometimes people aren't even completely aware that they're being put into this mood by the music mm -hmm. and you know the fact that they did like hip-hop western is amazing yeah. it just you know, I think, I think a formation story, what's interesting to, to go back to the Biden article um, from David Brooks is the formation story is almost, I think, in some ways, a new understanding of people's like personal philosophies. So instead of saying, like, I believe that it is my job to make the world a better place, they say, I went through this and I don't want this to happen to other people. They're essentially the same thing, but one is incredibly urgent the second one, and meaningful and emotional, while the first one is just almost like a statement of fact, like this is my intent versus this is like my emotional fuel. So I think with brands, because brands are just stories that, and the thing that I think is really challenging in the best way is in our positions in marketing is we tell this story internally as much as we're telling this story externally to our audience because it's really important that our organization knows who they are and where they want to go. 
Um, I think one of the reasons why the Dark Towers on my mind is their world keeps, like the idea is the world keeps changing, but Roland stays the same. He's the hero of the story. So if he didn't know he was the hero of the story, what do you do when all of a sudden the skies are purple and there's like little green men? Like, no, you got to keep going. You've got to still be the hero of the story. So I think with brands, if you don't know who you are and the media landscape keeps changing and keeps evolving, how, how do you... How do you know what to do? I mean, everybody, even though they've finally like fallen off of their rising quarters, but Apple, like their story was we make technology that people love, not we make computers that do X, Y, and Z. And that enabled them to like move into all these different areas, experiment, a lot of times even fail, but try to do a lot of things that other companies just weren't ever agile. They weren't, it wasn't even within their realm of thinking because that wasn't their story. So I think that that's where stories for brands are so important because they're within and without. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing to go back to your even better question about like, why is this important for your career? Is that if you don't have the story internally for yourself, how do you know when you're presented with a good opportunity that maybe doesn't have lights hanging off of it? That doesn't say, hey, we're a really important, good opportunity. If you don't know that that's where you want to go, if you don't know that you want to chase certain types of opportunities because that's what satisfies you. That's what you feel like you could work 24 seven on because it's so exciting to you or move across the country or commit to doing something different if you don't know that about yourself. And that's the same for, for companies because how do you make, how do you make business moves that, you know, sometimes they cannot be, a lot of times they're not comfortable or they're hard or you're making hard choices. If you don't know what you want to do, you can't even, you don't even know if you're making the right hard choice, which makes it the impossible choice, right? So I think that that's why it's so important from uh, on every level.